And now, weighing in out of the blue corner, Josh the Pong Thompson. 100% agree. And on the other mic, he weighs in from the red corner, Big John McCarthy. Well, hello to everyone. Yes, it is the Weighing In Podcast. My man, Josh, is ready to go. He's been on the soccer fields, the football fields. The lacrosse games have been going on, and then he came back to watch Canelo, and then he watched the UFC Noche, and he's got all kinds of things to report. Well, I'm just going to sit here and listen to him, because really, (laughs) I got so bummed out after the last two fights, I don't know what to say, but how are you doing, my man? Did did you stay out of the sun a little bit? Yeah, I did a little bit today. You know, even though we're, we got lucky with the morning cloud cover, so the I don't normally coach f- football, my son's football, but his coach had to go out of town and his son plays for the team also. So one of our players left. It's 7v7, like basically flag football. Yeah. So, uh, you know, passing played, league. Yeah, passing league, basically. Yeah. But so I was helping a coach today with another parent. The two of us were coaching and uh, we uh, we lost by a lot the first game and we won by a lot the second game. So it was nice. So you got better. Yeah, we got better. We definitely okay, get better. Okay, there you go. Also, there too, you in all fairness, the first game was against sixth graders and then, you know, the second game was against fifth graders. So it kind of worked out. Uh, but, you know, uh, then, then from there, we went to soccer where they, they played the number one team for their league in their in the state. And they lost 2-0. It was a close game, though. They gave up uh, a, a le- two legit goals. I mean, they just – great right placement, right time, everything like that. Good stuff, though, by, by the other team. Good job by them. But our boys are playing a lot better now, so uh, it's good. I, I'm enjoying watching them grow. We got a new coach this last March, and he's been – it's been awesome, man. So he's been great. Uh, lacrosse isn't until tomorrow, but my daughter had her first game today. Oh. And they got blown out. I felt so bad. <laughs> I felt so bad. She got in the car. I, cause we were, we have, I have this thing. I was like, Hey, if you score a goal for every goal, you get a dollar. And she's like, you just pay me a hundred dollars now. No. <laughs> and they got blown out seven to zero. I wonder where she <laughs> so got that cockiness from. She was so like, she got in the car and she was so upset that she didn't score a goal. I, I was like, it's not easy. I was trying to explain, even though they don't have goalies at that age, you know, she just yeah. turned five. So they don't have goalies. But, yeah, but they, uh, and that's funny because all you do is you watch the ball and you watch this group just, just chase yeah. the ball. It's like a pack of dogs just <laughs> chasing is. their tail just, after each other. Yeah, it's pretty They just funny. chase the ball. It's I mean, I was trying not to get upset, but like literally she had two breakaways and her own teammate took her down. Oh, like nice. took her down, like literally like yes. tackled her trying to get That's the ball all... away from her. I'm like, you're on the same team. No, no, no. It's uh, my ball. Oh, man. I was, <laughs> I was, you know, a competitive spirit right there. I'm like, get up and kick your teammate. Like, just do something. Oh, right. Dude. I was so mad, John. I'm like, coaches, oh. what are you doing? Coaches like, tell, they don't even know which way. Like, they didn't, first off, understanding they don't know which way. I get it. Like you change every 10 minutes. They change going the other direction. And I'm like, why would you do that to them? Do it like every 20 minutes because they do 10 minute halves because it's hot today. So they do yeah. 10 minute, 10 minute, 10 minute for 40 minutes. So they play 40 minutes, but they do 10 minute. But it was real muggy in the afternoon. So anyways, look, I don't want to bore you guys too much with all my, my kids' sports stuff. But man, I had a good day today. It was a long day. We didn't get back, though, until late. And uh, I was able to catch uh, the main card of the UFC. I caught some of the prelims as well. Uh, I was able to watch Bellator in the car ride because it was about an hour away from, uh, you know, from where we were at. So I was able to catch the Bellator fights as well. And um, and, and then I watched a little bit of the Canelo fight till about round 10. I was like, all right, this thing's over. It, I mean, was, it was over already, but. Thank you. Yeah, it was, it was a, you know, it was a dominant performance. I, I, was, I was really <laughs> surprised that his opponent, being the, the heavy puncher, being the bigger guy, sure didn't act like it when he fought out there. And I get it. It's Canelo. No. I get it. Yeah. It's Canelo. But we'll get more into that in a second. We'll just kind of comb over it, too, because, like I said, there wasn't much of a fight. But uh, let's go ahead and jump you know, right into all this. But, hey, before we get started, though, this whole episode is brought to you by BetUS. Uh, John and I gave you some good bets this weekend. Well, we thought were some good bets. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. We, we came up. And just so you guys know, I actually put money down on these bets as well because I really <laughs> thought Sean was going to get it done. I know. So I lost 250 bucks on Sean. Uh, I had Sean winning by submission. I thought for sure, and I, I was gonna, I was gonna die on the hill thinking that whether it was triangle, guillotine, uh, you know, and a plus, I think it was a uh, plus twelve hundred when I put money down on it, and uh, I had him winning by submission. Well, that didn't happen tonight. As a matter of fact, he didn't even get the win. So, but this this whole thing's brought to you by BetUS. I want to thank you guys so much for continuing to subscribe to us. Uh, if you guys want to win one hundred fifty percent. 
There you go, George. Give me the little hand gestures there. One hundred and fifty percent bonus on your all the guys's, way up to all the way up to two thousand dollars on your Thank first you deposit much. with them. If you guys use our promo code YouTube one hundred and fifty, go ahead and hit that YouTube one hundred and fifty at BetUS. So. uh yeah, man, I want to thank you guys for always supporting us. And also go to WayneAndMerch.com, pick up some of our apparel there. I'll be getting some new designs. Hopefully, I'm still waiting for a call back from our guy. <laughs> and so hopefully, we get this thing done and wrapped up so I can we can make some changes on the new apparel that's coming out. And John's got a, sh a shirt on there, too, that's available on our site. Let's let's take a look at that thing. Let's see it. It's Come a beaut, on, it's a beaut baby. Yeah, it is a beaut. Boom, look at that. There we go. Wayne in podcast. I love that. I like yeah, a little shield, like a flat shield. American flag. I like that. Nice. Beautiful. Beautiful. Making me feel all patriotic about the Wayne <laughs> podcast. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, hey, look, let's jump right into the main event there, John. Go ahead ahead, man. Rob and You know, be before we, we, we jump into the main event, I want to talk about what did you think of the sphere? Uh, you know, did, did you think it was cool? Did you think it was special? Did you think, nah, who cares? I mean, I guess I'm going to approach this a couple different ways to, since we're about to talk about the, about the main event. Sean O'Malley, when he walked out, had looked like he hadn't walked out to the arena yet when he got there. He didn't. You could tell. He was. Yep. He was looking Which around is, like. And in, what do we what do we tell fighters yeah. all the time? Make that walk. Get in that cage. Bounce mm -hmm. around. Make it your home. So it's not like, oh, this is the first time I've done this. It's a whole and, new venue. It's a whole new yep. experience. It's. Anytime I traveled overseas, I always try to make sure, or not just overseas, anytime I traveled to a new venue, I try to make sure I got up into the into the cage, try to make sure that Boring, I made the walk yep. down, and kind of understood where I was going for bathrooms and, you know, and, doc and all doctors of it. and all of it. Just, just figure it out. Yeah. But he walked out, and you could tell it was like deer in headlights. He looked like, and I don't know if that had anything to do with his performance. I, I don't want to take away from that, but I'm simply saying there was there was some of that when he came in which was different than what we're used to seeing. I think he's used to walking out either in the T-Mobile arena or the apex or places where he just, Hey, it's like another arena. Just walk down the hall and I open up and it's a big circular yeah. thing. No, no, no. Now this time it was all screens with, you know, one side having the crowd. And so it's a, it's a different feel. Um, in terms of what do I, what did I think of it? Um, you know, it was kind of hard to tell from where I was at, but I don't know if you guys remember the old casino in Vegas called the Aladdin. Yeah, remember the strip mall that they had there? I don't even know. The Aladdin's not even there anymore. It's like the Paris no, or anyways. <laughs> um, but they they had a strip mall that was in there, and it used to show like clouds that looked so real up on the ceiling and the roof, and it just kind of gave me that feeling a little bit when I was yeah. watching, you know, tonight. Because I don't know if you guys noticed, they had like the Aztec, like like kind of the the like Aztec or Mayan temple, like kind of like displayed up on the screen. But above it, they had the sky, and it looked so real. It looked, it looked amazing. I thought it looked awesome. I think fighting there would have, would have been amazing. Would have probably been a lot to take in. Um, I thought that they would have had the fight actually on the screen while. Yeah, they I would have thought so too with that. But yeah, but um, I but that might be that also might be distracting. It might be. I, I probably would have been to be honest. It probably would have been really distracting to be honest. But I, I wouldn't have known until I would have seen it. And I think the fighters would have maybe had said something too, like, hey, how would it have been? But I don't know. I thought that that's, that's what they would have had. Like, hey, I'm fighting, but now my opponent is 10 feet tall. Like, Hold it, 10 feet tall. 10, feet, 10, 10 stories, I'm in. When they, when they started, they had the you know the beginning fight with Rodriguez and O'Day Osborne, mm -hmm. and they're standing there, and, and there's there they are, 70 feet tall up on yeah. the screen. I was like, yeah. what would that be like to look at yourself saying, hey, I'm 70 feet tall? <laughs> You know, you know what's crazy, John, is that we we're having a place like that built here. So there's one called Cos Cosmo. Anyways, there's a place here that's already like that. So it's like a half sphere um, when you walk in, and it's like you can go in to watch football games and UFC fights and and boxing matches. But it's like a, it's just a big theater room. But but it's, so it's big. like an IMAX. It's like an IMAX. No, no, but it goes up and over you. I'll have to show okay. you. I'll have to send you the uh, the link for it. It's pretty cool. But they're also in DFW in Dallas Fort Worth. They're building a smaller version of the Sphere. Okay. So they're gonna have concerts, live events, everything like that coming coming soon. So they're saying I think it's gonna be done in like the end of 2026 is when they should be done with it. So we'll find out. But it's a smaller, a little bit smaller version of the Sphere. 
So I will tell you this. That'd be cool. You know, I, I've been all over the world, damn it, and I've been in some of the, the greatest arenas that people talk about. I even been in, you know, the Roman Coliseum and all that, where they were talking about doing a fight and everything. And uh, never got to do fights in the Roman Coliseum, but every, you know, you can go to like the K ones or the Prides or any of those, and you know, great arenas with special stuff being done. I remember one of the K ones had a, they had an orchestra. Mm-hmm for the fights i mean an entire orchestra it was like crazy and stuff but i gotta say that you know i always said that the royal albert hall in london was the the first ufc there it was ufc 38 and it had these roman weren't roman these red velvet drapes everywhere with this gold background and stuff and it was this small compact but it went real high i always said you know that was the coolest place that I ever did fights because of the fact that it just looked like, you know, you know, are you not entertained? Mm. It was one of those, it was like the Roman, you know, gladiator days. And it was always really cool. I actually think that just watching it, that venue was probably the coolest one as far as what they could do and how it looked and how they had like the Aztec temples, then switched it over to the, you know, the old missions and things like that. It was really cool, I thought. I thought overall, that was a neat experience. I mean, they did all kinds of special things and stuff. The fights were, you know, what they are. Then you're not going to be able to change that in the whole context. But the to see the way they, you know, did everything, I actually thought it was really neat. I, I, people, I heard people complain, saying, this is stupid. It's better at the apex. It's like, shut up. Shut up. <laughs> No, uh they, i mean i they, thought it was cool they were probably salty that they weren't there they're from they're sitting on their couch at home <laughs> complaining about, about that they couldn't afford the three thousand dollar ticket which most of us well, didn't which, want to pay uh, that much okay i couldn't which either. yeah i understand yeah um you know i would probably say for me my my not my favorite venue but i thought for me was kind of the most like probably the coolest was this little pier out on the uh the black sea and it was for S70. Trevor Prangley was the main event. Vladimir Putin was sitting there cage side. Alex Ovechkin was cage side. I'm sorry, they found a ring. And uh, Fedor was there. Well, was it? Side. Wasn't that one in Sochi? Yep, it was in Sochi. Yep. Yeah. So yep, that was that to me was probably the best because sitting all around the pier was military ships, basically. Yeah. You know, and getting the chance to and say what you want, man, but like. I'm sorry, but I got to meet Vladimir Putin. Like literally, I've like, done within, the same thing. It was like, cool. Two feet. I'm of sorry. Me. I don't I'm care sorry. what people it's just say. Cool. It's like all right, cool. Yeah. Like, you know, I mean, you hear about him, and this was this was obviously. I think he was. I don't think he was. Um, or he was the president. Sorry, at the I time. Say, yeah, he was. No, he was. No, he was. But it was. It was <laughs> just. It was just time. cool, man. It was just cool that yeah. you know. It was. A, it was like very just kind of. Oh wow, this is really happening. Like, you know, full background checks, full military, like uh, their version of the Secret Service, giving you pat downs, checking your bags, yeah. doing everything, everything, everything. So, yeah, I mean, they had put us up in nice five star places there. It was, you know, saunas, spas, you know, full, full food, everything. It was awesome. It was actually, tr- we were training where the Olympic uh, athletes were all training for like the bobsled and all the other stuff. So, uh, yeah, it was in Sochi, though. Beautiful, man. Yep. Beautiful. Yep. So, that was probably the coolest. I mean, just because, you know, you get to meet Putin, too. Like, it was all right. It's different. I mean, I'm sorry. You know, I mean, nope, I would have thought. I would have thought tonight, though, John, of all nights, that Trump was going to show up. I I kind of thought that, too, because he was in uh, he was in, he Va- was in Nevada. He, yeah, he was in Nevada. I, yeah, I thought. For a while, then, it, then he was in uh, California. But, it, yeah, I had the same thing. What uh, Putin was in, I was in uh, Chelyabinsk in Russia. I've, I've been all over Russia and, mm-hmm. you know, Rosvendon and st petersburg and all those but i was in a place called chelyabinsk and that's like the pittsburgh it's the, it's where they make their tanks and everything for uh it's like their steel town but they they put on an incredible you know array of stuff for me and uh to be able to see what their lifestyle was like and they went back to old times and how they did these whip ch- challenges with each other and stuff it was just they were just awesome and that was a cool experience because that was the russian amateur championships that i went and did but as far as arena i gotta say the el noche was pretty cool yeah it seemed like it was cool it did i mean all right let's get on with marab 
the champion, the new Bantamweight champion of the world. But unfortunately, he's going to have to fight a guy named Umar Nurmagomedov. No, I'm not going to even put it there yet. But he did have the, the style that was needed. We said, look, if Marab's going to win, he's going to win by taking him down and just you know grinding on Sean for five rounds and get the decision. And that's he was able to do it. Sean was not able to tag him. Sean was not able to do anything to really stop uh, the takedowns or anything. I mean, he stopped some, but it seemed like when Marab really wanted to get in there, he was able to get you know get deep on him, get him down, and control him for most of the round. And he, I know there was two of the scores were forty eight, forty seven. Yeah, and I, yeah, yeah. But you could look, and I, there was. A, I'm trying to remember which round now, and I, I want to say it was the third, I believe that you could look and say, all right, he put on some submissions, a possibility. The fifth round, you could definitely, oh, was, uh, fifth round was definitely um, O'Malley's, but look, Marab deserved it. He did a, he did exactly what he was supposed to do. And uh, it seemed like from the very beginning, at once the first round was over, he was like, oh yeah, I can, I, I'm going to do okay here. And he, he just kept on marching. Yeah. I, w I went through the whole process of watching O'Malley walk out going, this is, the, it was like a little uh, bit of shock and all, like deer in headlights kind of. And then he got into the cage. He didn't seem his, and I'm not trying to make excuses for him at all. I'm simply saying he didn't seem as like, let's have some fun, bounce that around. Sharp. Yeah, I don't know what it was. He just seemed a little off. And there's days that you look like that when you come into the cage, you know. Um, but look, Marab, this is where I think the, the difference was in the fight. Marab was very Keith Jardine. Oh yeah. Sean Sean had no idea where what he was going to do. Shoot, throw an overhand right, throw a spinning back fist. He had no idea. True. And you could tell after the second round that Sean was super frustrated. I don't know yeah. what to do with this guy. I don't know how I don't know if he's well, going to shoot on me. He keeps like, he's running away from me. Now he's now he's closing in on mm -hmm. me. Now he's running away from me. And it was just he, he frustrated him. Yep. And you Sean covers it. Sean and Marab covers distance very well when he hits his shots. When he penetrated mm -hmm. and got deep the end of those legs, <clears throat> he was able to to drive him all the way through, get him to his back. It was almost effortless, is yeah. what, he, what he was making it look like. And the striking that was setting it up it was a lot of herky jerky, a lot of bouncing around. He was always out of range, so he couldn't get hit clean. He does a good job of covering space, moving both his feet, not just leaning back. I thought Marab did a great job, man. He did everything he needed to do to become the champ. Um, I think in the fifth round, <clears throat> no different than Valentina. The, you know, the I think they believed that they were ahead, which they were. Sure, but you've got to be careful, man. Like you got to mm -hmm. be careful because he could have he got know. he got kicked to the body in the third in the fifth, and oh, yeah. just and when you start it. playing a different game than what you've been this than what's been working for you. This is the same as the NFL with, oh, we're going to go into prevent. Yeah. Why are you going to go into prevent when you've been doing great with your normal game plan? <clears throat> yeah, I don't get it. I don't either. You know, and so. Don't sit there and change it. Yeah, I mean, anyways, it, I thought Marab fought a great fight. Uh, I don't see them giving Sean an automatic rematch. I don't think that fight warrants an automatic rematch. It. You know, that's why I'm being honest. I think they're going to put Umar and Nurmagomedov against yeah, Marab. Marab, and that's where you look and you go, "Welcome to being the champion." Yeah. <laughs> it's like, uh, well, I mean, this is as much as as much as everyone knows that I'm a fanboy for my boy Umar. That's a tough fight for him. Sure, it is. You know, it, the pace is going to be aggressive. Um, the the wrestling is going to be on a different level um, than anybody he's fought. Um, he's going to have to grind it out. He's going to have to stuff takedowns. He's going to have to get takedowns to slow yeah. Marab down. You can't just let Marab dance in front of you, you know, for five rounds and just keep trying to take you down and you defend, defend, because then you'll end up looking like Sean, where you just don't know whether he's going to throw a big overhand right or if he's going to try to shoot on you. You've got to get wrestling and make it offensive as well to make him respect you. you got to <clears> counter it. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be difficult. It's going to be a tough fight. I did like Habib's interview, though, where he said he's going to have the – the blonde or the blonde ha papushka and then the uh yeah, the, and the, the black one. the black papushka and i was like it's kind of cool you know they're yeah, both gonna both walk out with their, with their, their yeah, ceremonial with their, hats yeah that's gonna be great so that's, that's kind of cool that. um 
Look, I mean, let's just be honest. I was wrong uh, on the betting. I thought Sean for sure was going to get the submission. I was leaning more towards submission than mo- most people were leaning towards knockout. Even the betting odds had the knockout. But I had him getting the finish. Uh, I even put a little extra down on the submission portion of it all. You know, um, but hey, hey, it just didn't come about. You just can't pick them all. Man. No, that's, you that's, can't. And that's why this is why I said this is why they always this is why you fight the fight. God, you, I expect to be able to pick them all though. I mean, I'm a yeah. I'm a true prof- I'm. <laughs> I'm, you are a true professional. A true you professional. are. And you know what? You're going to get most of them wrong. John, this, this is <laughs> when people is. ask, you know, f- when they when they bring people in to the courtrooms and they say he is an expert, they're talking yeah. about people like me. Are okay? they talking about people like you? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so you know what Void Dyer is, mm-hmm. right? No, no. I'm just talking about extra, <laughs> experts like me. <clears throat> yeah, that would be an expert in court. <clears throat> okay, Dyer. whatever. We'll put you under Void Dyer to see exactly what you know. Yeah, I'm just an expert. And as soon as they started asking questions of you as far as the sport of MMA, like the rules, they would quickly say, this is not an expert. No, I, I am, though, John. I am. <laughs> I am. <clears throat> just because a little bit of CTE creeps in there every once in a while. Just it's a little. It's just, you know, it's, yeah. I'm still an expert. You are um, <clears throat> but overall, what's your, what, if you're going to rate the fight, what would you give it? Out of 10. Oh, One out fight, of 10. The fight itself? Look, it was a boring fight, it was, but it it, it kind of had to be for the guy that won it to win it. And we said that he was going to have to go and, you know, take down Maul, repeat, take down Maul, repeat, take down Maul, repeat, you know, and that's what he did. And, and that's what got him to win. And I don't blame him for having that game plan. That's, you know, to sit there and say, oh, you should have been, you know, you should have made it exciting. You should have stood on your feet and, you know, throwing hands with him no because you wouldn't have won so i look at it and say well, you know as a championship fight it's a five you know it's it's, it's not it wasn't you know it definitely wasn't you know a, a barn burner it wasn't the worst thing i mean there was a lot of there was some drama in there and there were some times that you looked and said you know there were some things going on but overall five yeah i was leaning more towards six but, but they had but they had a couple n- nines and tens earlier. No, they had some great fights earlier. Boy, they had some great they fights. They had some really good fights earlier. Whether you're an Olympic athlete, professional hockey player, MMA world champion, or just an active kid, Element helps anyone stay hydrated. Each stick pack delivers a meaningful dose of electrolytes free of sugar, artificial colors, or other dodgy ingredients. Get your free sample pack with any Element drink mix purchase through link in bio. Also try the new Element Sparkling, a bold 16 ounce can of sparkling electrolyte water. Roll, train, ride, or play, but stay hydrated and stay salty. Uh, okay, let's go jump into the co-main event. <laughs> this is the same, man. You know, the, the the whole part with this one is, and it, again, smart game plan by Valentina, mm-hmm. Valentina Shevchenko. This was her way of getting a win against Grasso, and she went and did it that way because, hey, I'm, this is how I'm able to get my win. She went and did it. Congratulations to her. It was a smart game plan. I don't blame you, but... It's not the Valentina Shevchenko that we, you know, became used to and, and you know, admired and, and looked at and, and loved to watch fight because she was so good with her stand-up. And she was good with her stand-up when she did it against Grass. So she had a couple of, you know, nice moments, but quickly went to the takedowns and stuff and made it a very slow, you know, methodical fight that, she just systematically won round after round after round, and she won every round, in my opinion. Um, it was just when you take a look and you go, yeah, she didn't do a lot. No. Which she didn't, but she did enough compared to when you looked at the the closest submission attempt that Grasso had, truthfully, was the guillotine. Round four. Yeah. yeah. That was the closest one, and that's the one if you want to say, okay, you want to try to lean and give that round to grass? Okay, but still, you know, it's not going to change anything in this. 
in the in the whole realm of things and she lost you know almost every round then yeah i gave i gave grasso round two and i was leaning towards giving her round four until she got reversed and mounted and took cut like you know two or three shots like right before the bell but i was still yeah. i was still kind of on the fence around uh, about round four the reason being john is because uh valentina did absolutely nothing from the top all she did was defend submissions like she she passed and then put herself right back in. She didn't put herself back in guard. She just didn't try to stop Grosso from getting her back in guard. And just was the same thing over and over and over again. She was literally squeezing, holding the hips, trying not to let her do anything with her head down. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of getting the takedown is just not enough to me anymore. The person who's trying to mount some sort of offense should have got should have been awarded the round. So that's the way I looked at it. Now, if she was threatening the submission, sure, maybe they didn't get as close as we'd have liked. But some of them were to the point where the arm was actually pulled all the way through and the elbow was just slightly cleared at the last second. Those are better attempts than any of the strikes that she was trying to attempt. This whole wrist, body, body, head shit. Like we tie it. It's it was. Yeah, it was just uh, it was a shitty situation. So I understand why Valentina did it. There was so much riding on her wanting to get her title back. And, you know, yep. and and, you know, I've just I, I, over the time I've lost a little bit for her because you know the whole time after the last fight she was very um kind of whiny about the situation and then tonight it was like oh everything's better now because i won i just i i just you know hey you know what it it just it was a it kind of just i was always high on her always wanted to support her i mean you and i both but it just i lost a lot of i would say i don't want to say respect but i just i lost something for I, i just don't care to see her fight right now I don't know what it is. I'm I'm kind of losing interest, and in, I don't know. Uh, Grasso was a change of pace, a different type of uh, fighter there, and that's I was looking for that. So uh, that was more than probably just me on that. But I thought Grasso. I and this is another situation. This fight, it was very apparent that even though Valentina is probably the better kickboxer, Alexa Grasso has her number on the feet. But what made it look like she didn't have her number tonight was because of the wrestling. Alexa yeah. was getting hit with shots, you know, and when I, when, you know, John and I are here, you guys, for those of you guys listening at home, John and I are here to try to inf- give you guys a little bit more of a in-depth uh, pers- insight, insight, but perspective on how these fights, how fighters approach these things. She got out grappled in the first fight, get to the point where she lost a position, got her back taken and got choked. Second fight, she had lost a couple of positions in that scramble and some scrambles there where she gave up her back and she gave a position two in the second fight. Wasn't like so she understood that on the ground she's got to be very careful with the with the submission stuff uh, from Alexa Grasso. So she knew that wrestling and staying in the guard or getting in the half guard was her best bet tonight. But she had to cover that distance by letting the striking go, not doing, not over committing on things, you know, not leaving herself out there for too long to be hit and countered, and trying to stay as long as she could with it. And that's what she did tonight. Great yeah. job. But if it's so funny because Vance. Uh, uh, Shevchenko is the better striker if I was to put up their records, right? You'd be like, hey, who's the oh, better yeah. striker, better kickboxer? It'd be Shevchenko. But in the bottom line is when they fought, Grosso has been the better slash boxer striker that's landed the harder, cleaner shots, the one that's actually been able to touch her a little bit more. But then that all had to be changed if she wanted to get her, her title back. you know. And so she fought a great fight tonight, a very smart fight, very boring for us at home. Yeah. Especially at one in the morning, trying to watch it, but uh, but yeah, it was uh, you know, hey, but textbook on what you need to do to get it done. So both yeah. you know, Marab and both Shevchenko, both of them, they fought the way they needed to win that title. And guys, I, I, I would normally be like, ah, oh, you know, if it was another fight, I'd probably say something. But right now, the the money between yeah. being the champion and not being the champion. I don't. I don't care how you win the fight. I understand. Yeah. I know it sucks yeah. for us fans at home, but man, make your money. Yep. Like whatever it takes for you to make that money, make your money. So, I get it. I understand. Uh, next fight. This is one we had Brian Ortega taking on, or Diego Lopez taking on Brian Ortega. I would say based upon the rankings at the time, and you know we had Ian Parker on, and he told us stuff because we were both looking towards Brian Ortega. And then we said, you know what? Ian, I think, is right here. I think Brian's kind of overlooking. Then after watching the fight, I don't, I don't know that Brian overlooked anything. Brian was his normal, just tough self. But 
Diego Lopez was the, the guy that when you looked at the fight overall, it almost seemed like, yeah, Brian was like, hey, I'm coming out here and I'm going to fight hard, but it really doesn't matter what happens because I'm going to a different weight class, just like Ian talked about. Diego, Diego Lopez is looking to become the champion. He's looking to, to impress. He got tired after that first round and he, you know, he shot his wad. Let's just be honest, mm -hmm. you know, it, and I don't blame him because he had Brian seriously hurt and he, he was in a position to possibly end the fight. Didn't happen, but man, you know, everything that was happening with the whole thing, the way the arena was it, it, getting that the quick uh knockdown basically of uh brian it wasn't a knockdown did but eventually he went down to the ground i don't blame him for going after him the way he did i thought that's what you know we want to see out of him and he's got some holes they're not huge but there's some holes there that he's going to have to shore up against someone like a tapuria or a max holloway he's going to have to change some things up because his stand up is a little bit stiff and he starts to push his punches when he gets a little bit tired. You can see it a little bit different. But overall, you got to give him credit, man. He put on a great performance against a super tough fighter, a guy that comes, you know, to, you know, give you everything he has. And Brian did, went all the way to the end. But in the end, Brian definitely looked like the beat fighter. And congratulations to Diego Lopez. Yeah. I When you see them standing face to face at the weigh ins, Diego Lopez is bigger than Brian Ortega. Yes. So that's one thing. Two is, I think some of his cutting his weight is affecting his conditioning. Yeah. Because he looked tired again in the third round today. And yes, he, he looked did. more tired in the Dan Ige fight because Dan puts more pressure and grinds and hangs and pushes you to the fence. And, you know, and Dan had nothing to lose in that fight. So he could fight at a reckless, careless play, uh, pace and not have to worry about it. Diego looked good in spurts in the third round where he knew like, yeah, hey, I got to let it go um, to get kind of start kind of win back the exchanges. So I yeah. thought he did, he did enough in the third, but you, I kind of feel like his weight cut is getting to him. So I don't know how he's doing or what, or how he needs to fix it, but he needs to make some adjustments. So he's not going through that because most of his stuff from now on will be main event. Oh yeah. And so you know, him being main events can be a five round fight. You he, know, it's funny because, one of the things I saw, though, and it was like it was after the first round, I believe, uh, when Ortega made it through, he came back to his corner and he's touching his throat like he got hit in the throat. Anik picked it up in the second round, but he and he continued to touch his throat. I'm like, what is he doing? I I almost felt like it was a tick. I was watching the same thing. Yeah, it's almost because like John, I used to always just touch my chin and touch my head to my to my hand to my head because I'm always pushing my headgear up. So it was like touch my chin to keep my hands on my chin and then push your headgear up and then come back down to your chin. It was always this motion and I would do it all the time. And when I fought Nate, I had long hair in the front and people were like, what are you doing? And I was kind of pushing my hair out of my face, but it kind of went in rhythm of touch my chin and then move my headgear and move my hair out of my face kind of thing and come back. What I saw, it almost seemed like it was a way he checked to see if his hands were at his chin. Like he would do this. But I, I couldn't tell if he got punched in the throat. I didn't know. I, I couldn't I didn't tell. either. But I was I, like it was, it was like something bothered him. But then you know he continued on in the fight. But so I was like, oh, it's, it's not affecting him. I guess it, it's strange. But he's not complaining about it. He's not making any kind of uh, story about it. So yeah, I wonder though if Brian hit him there or something like that. Might have Brian because I noticed that Diego had some choice words and almost like do remember I don't know if you watched at the end because I wonder if they got because it seemed like there was some animosity going into the halfway through the second and he he was like almost pointing to his his throat though also to Brian and then he was talking trash to Brian inside the cage as they were exchanging and I was like what is going on and at the end they didn't they crossed paths and Diego walked all the way around him. Like to yeah. avoid like even touching gloves, the announcement that had already been done or they were about to announce it, but it, but it was after the fact. And so it was almost like, no, screw you. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to deal with you. I'm done. I, you know, like, so something must have happened. Something had to have happened. I don't know. So uh, we'll find out. But this was another fight that I, even though it was a great fight, I thought this it was, was a, a real, great fight. It was a great fight. Um, I, I didn't I didn't know what to expect, to be honest. I was expecting Brian to be a little bit more aggressive. He fought at a very casual pace. 
what I'm seeing from Brian is he's been there, kind of done that, came up short, and now I think he's in this uh, veteran mode. You know, I I, I, I didn't get any sense of urgency from him in the third round. I didn't get like, I've got to win this. I've got to get after it. Like, I didn't get any of that. I don't know if he's ever been that way, but I didn't see that. And and just to clear it, to, to point this out, I don't think it's going to get better for him at 155, John. I don't either. No, I'm being honest. I, like, I, I love Brian as a fighter, love him as a person. Uh, but at 155, his... He's got a big frame for 145, but not 155. It's average. And strength-wise, I do believe that there's too many people that have a strength advantage over him. Punching power-wise, it's going to really start to affect him because they're oh, going yeah. to take that shot that normally hurts someone and they're not going to be hurt by it. Um, and when you look at you know 155, it's just a bigger version of the 145 as far as you know speed-wise, they're still fast. They all wrestle. They all have a, a basic jujitsu game. They all have good stand up. So I mean, you're basically talking about the best division in the sport. I get it. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> there he goes again. Uh, that, that you are not part of. Just so no, you know, no, yeah. Uh, at one time, long gone. way, way yeah. back. I want way, way, way back. Way back. But, no, it, you know, it still is. It's probably you know, it's still one of the premier divisions. Oh, absolutely. Within the sport. Yeah. And so I just look at it, and you go. If you're not beating Diego Lopez at 145 and you're not beating these guys that are in the top, you know, you know, five in 145, how are you going to beat the top five in 155? I just don't see. But maybe it is. It's the one thing. Mm -hmm. Just like you said about Diego Lopez, maybe the weight cut is killing Brian. It doesn't seem like his cardio is that is bad. He always seems like he has cardio. But maybe that weight cut is causing him problems. Possibly, but I'm looking at this like who who is he gonna beat? Brian Ortega is number three. I'm looking. I'm not talking about Brian Ortega. I'm talking about uh, Diego Lopez. He's all the way up now. Probably let's just say he ends up being at like number four, somewhere in there, four maybe five in that Arnold Allen, Yair Rodriguez. I mean, Diego Lopez and Arnold Allen would be a good fight. Yeah, it would. That'd be a good fight. So then he would jump uh, Evolov, uh, who he's fought. Who he has already fought, yep, but Evolov should, is now fighting. Yep, he'll Al jump, Jermaine. and uh, he's fighting Aljamain, so that's a good yep. fight. Aljamain is number eight, so that's uh, that's the two of them. But I mean, Diego was going to jump both those guys over mm -hmm. his win with Brian Ortega, so yeah. he'll be in that number four, maybe it. that number five spot. You yeah. know, but uh, you know, there's Max. He just beat Brian. There's Yair. I don't know if he's going to be active for a little bit. Uh, and then you got Arnold Allen, which Yair just law or yeah, just lost to Brian. Lost to Brian. So that kind of puts it all in a weird position. So, I mean, he may jump all the way up to number two or sorry, well, number three. There's he, a possibility. Yeah. I would say three. Yeah. 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 So we're going to find out though, but you know, Aljo being there, I mean, Aljo, I think at, at that weight, I, I had, didn't have high expectations for him at 145. But uh, I'm starting to actually see that he's he's actually filling out really well. He's yeah. he's filling no, he's, out. Really, he, he looks good. I think you know Al Jermaine is the perfect example of a guy that he can make 135, mm -hmm. and he was a big 135er. But in the end, I think it was affecting him. He was having problems with that cut, and it was mm -hmm. at 145. He's just feeling better, looking good. And he's big enough to be with everyone yeah. in the one forty five pound weight class. So got it. I think it's a good spot for him. But, but if he I go does over to a tough fight, if I go over to one fifty five though, John, and I hit up one fifty five, uh, and, and I look at be that, honest, look at there's nowhere. The only guy that I could say would be would be uh, Charles Oliveira, because you get a little bit of grappling. He doesn't have a lot of power. Don't be wrong. He's got good striking, yeah. <clears throat> and he seems to find he he seems to find the mark. On people's chins. I mean, he's dropped a lot of guys, you know, and he's he's made them since, pay. Since Charles became the lightweight champion for the time that he was there, you know, even even his run up to it, he's changed as a fighter, and he is a much different animal now than he was, yeah. you know, four years ago when I would have said, "Yep, Brian Ortega and him would be a good matchup." I don't think it would be. No. I think Charles Oliveira overall would just start to run away with that fight on the ground. Brian's not going to do anything with him. You know, it's, we'll say it's even. Okay. 
even though most people are going to sit there and say Charles is going to, no. You could just, you could see that even with the Diego Lopez fight. Diego had problems with Brian when he was on the ground. Mm -hmm. You know, Brian always was able to quickly get his legs where he wanted, except when he was hurt at one point. And that's, that's trying to get your brain back. But when he was with his brain working, he, he quickly was able to move his legs into butterfly positions or in, you know, getting himself back to guard or anything while Diego was trying to, you know, pass, you know, through at times, wasn't able to do it. Yeah. So Brian's ground game is good. You know, it is solid. Not that he's going to do anything with Charles and I don't think Charles is going to do anything with him, but it, when it comes to the stand up, the big difference is the kicks. Yeah. Charles is a kicker where Brian really isn't. Brian is more boxing centric with the stand up. And that's going to be a problem for him in the end. Yeah, and he he's... doesn't have that power, in my opinion, to really hurt Charles now. Yeah, Brian doesn't have the power. He also doesn't have the speed. Yeah. I saw tonight, he's not a very fast guy, and he leaves himself out of position after he strikes quite a bit. I don't know. I like I don't know. I don't know what he's gonna do now. He's gonna have to reevaluate, he's gonna have to figure out what he wants to do. Going to fifty five, though, I'm not quite sure is the answer. Yes, it seemed to me that a lot of times, you know, we talk about, you know, moving in, throwing shots, and then we, we got to exit, we get out. And he was, at times, standing there, mm -hmm. almost waiting for the counter mm -hmm. to come when it's like, why are you, why are you waiting there? Mm -hmm. Get yourself out. But you know, just what happens in fighting. Yep. I mean, a lot of that's done in the gym. You got to make those changes in the gym. True. Boy, the fight before that, though, Daniel Zellhuber against Esteban Rabovic. Holy shit, what a great fight. Awesome. I mean, just back and forth. Rabovic always trying to land big shots and having a lot of power. You know, And I thought Zellhuber did a great job throughout most of that fight, the first two rounds, of absorbing the power at times, making it miss a lot. But, boy, did it land in the third round after he dropped him. Mm -hmm. He dropped him with an elbow. And then Rabovic comes back and puts it on him, but doesn't put him down. But, man, he had, he had the old stanky leg dance going, man. But I was so impressed with Zell Huber and his basic, his cage of dope, mm -hmm. I'm going to call it, the rope of dope. Man, he did a beautiful job, kept moving, did exactly what – you know, when people talk about why, you know, are they going to stop it? That's what we're asking a fighter to do. He's not just a target. He's trying to move. He's trying to look. He's trying to see and avoid shots or grab a hold of someone. Zell Huber did exactly what you were looking for to say, yeah, he's hurt. I know he's hurt, but he's trying. He's working. He's doing things that can be effective in keeping him safe. And he did a great job. He made Rubik's miss a lot of shots, but. Overall, just a fantastic fight between the two. Yeah. Um, did you have it scored that way? Uh, I did not. Okay. Being honest. That, but, that's what I wanted to know. But I was also, first off, I was rooting for Zell Huber. And, you know, so I'm, I'm looking. I, I can't say that I, I scored it, you know, like I would have if I was just a judge that mm. was just, you know, weighing things out. I was kind of watching and kind of rooting, so... But I thought Zell, I thought Zell Huber was going to get it, but I was okay with. Yeah, I thought Zell Huber won the first two rounds. I thought he lost the third. I so also I. thought maybe it'd be a draw if you could have went ten eight, but I no, just I couldn't because, go ten eight, especially after the knockdown. Exactly, that's where I was at too. I mean, but he did have him in trouble, and he was kind of like oh, yeah. pushing him around the cage for a good minute and a half. Oh yeah, that's a long time, John. Oh, <laughs> he yes, took a lot is. of shots. He took a so, lot of shots, and I'll tell you, you got to give it to Rubovix, man. Uh -huh. He was in shape. That dude was—he was throwing the whole time. I thought it was a great. I thought it was a great fight. The two of them got after. Unbelievable. It. Where I see with Zell Huber, he's got to make a couple little tweaks. Is um, he leaves himself extended after he's yep. done with his combination? And he's, he's he's watching what he's done. Yep. He's taking a picture of that beautiful masterpiece that he just put together and i'm going to sit here and watch what i did instead of get myself out yeah and then on top of that um fighting robovix is that he's he's a smaller fighter so you're having to punch down which leaves your chin in the air and so a little bit of that was happening too he would leave himself out there and his chin would be in the air and then he would get countered he wasn't getting countered clean in the first two rounds he did take a couple of shots here and there but he found the spot in the third and then it was, uh, yeah, he did. So 
But uh, I thought it was a fantastic fight. The two of them got after it. And that's kind of what you're looking for for your young, up-and-coming talent. Oh, yeah. And if I was to play, like, just a little bit, like, I don't want to say devil's advocate, but, like, I look at the Brian Ortega situation with Diego Lopez. And then I look at Zell Huber and Rovix. These two guys are where, where Lopez and Brian were, yeah. you know, a year ago. They Not want Brian. it. I mean, Brian's been a little bit longer than that, you know, I understand. But, yeah. like, Brian, Diego's, he's making that push. He yes. wants it. He wants it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, um, he had, like you said, he has some holes in his game. He's got, he needs to get them fixed. Yep. Um, you know, if you're going to try to make that run into that upper group of the top two, yeah, Max when you, Holloway, when you talk Bulk about the and, top, yeah, top three or so, yeah. man, you can't have those yep. That's things tough. that they, they watch film on you and go, Oh yeah. Look at that. Oof. And boy, uh, well, that's, what's going to happen to Sean O'Malley right now. Yeah. You know, if, I mean, look, uh, let's be honest. If I'm taking a look at 135, let me take a look here at 135. If I'm taking a look at 135, John, it says you got Umar, Peter Yan, you got Corey Sanhagen, got Figgy. Figgy will for sure wrestle him. Henry will for sure wrestle him. Peter Yan will probably start to wrestle him now um, if they were to fight again. Umar for sure is going to wrestle him. Sure. Uh, Sean O'Malley is going to be the fighter now that everyone's like, okay, all I got to do is just get him down. Avoid the guillotine. Avoid and, and look, I know it's easier said than done. But the herky jerkiness, the punching in and out, set it up and get in on the double legs. You got to be careful with the big knee up the middle, of course. But I mean, I think you you start to see as soon as someone beats you, they kind of lay out the game plan. Now it's up to you to, to mimic the game plan that'll work. Rob's game plan is very difficult to mimic because he's all herky jerky and he's shorter and he's explosive and he's got good wrestling. The thing that makes him work so well is that he's got great cardio. He weaponizes yeah. his cardio. Yep. So, I mean, just as you start to see top level fighters kind of, you know, lose here and there, the game plans now start to be laid out for the other fighters below them to start trying to figure out how to beat them. Hey, I want that fighter. He's coming off a loss. I saw the recipe on how to do it. You know, the blueprint on how to do it. I want that fight. They take it. Sometimes it wins. Sometimes they don't. But they have a little bit more success with it because the game plan has been laid out on how to beat them. Yeah, but you know who Sean O'Malley is going to fight next. Uh, who? Who's he fighting? It's going to be Corey Sanhagen. Both of them coming off a loss. Mm, very true. Makes it good makes fight. sense with this. The US. Oh, fantastic fight. Good fight. I would, I would somehow bet that it'll end up being O'Malley against Sanhagen, which is, like you said, fantastic fight, but they want to get one of them a win. Yeah. 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 Both of them are uh, about, what, 5'11? Yeah. Both are 5'11, I think. Very, yeah. That's 135. Be an interesting points. matchup. I think it will be. Oh, yeah. I think it will be. Sean, I think it'll be a little bit faster. Uh, Corey's going to be a little bit more of the technician on the feet. But Sean's going to pull out some little tricks here and there, the spinning back kicks, the you know those type of things. Whereas, yeah. Corey Cor does them now, too. Yeah, he does them here and there. They're it's very be a similar. fun fight. Oh, yeah. It'll be a fun fight. I think Sean's got the upper hand in the grappling, but I don't know if it's going to go there. Yeah. I think it'll stay on the feet. All right, next fight. All right, we had Ronaldo Rodriguez taking on O'Day Osborne. Boy, these guys went after it, too. This was a great start mm -hmm. to the main card. These guys went out, and O'Day Osborne lit him up and knocked him out in that first round. He, he, won, he was unconscious. To <laughs> Referee may not have seen it, but yeah. he went unconscious, and then O'Day hit him again and brought him back. And so the fight continued on, but he was out. I saw it, and I kept on saying, get the replay that shows that he was out. They never showed it again. Mm -mm. They don't want to show that. No, they don't want to get sued. Exactly. <laughs> no. Uh, I uh, thought, man, what a gutsy performance. Uh, just incredible. Gutsy. I mean, when, yep. when I was hearing him, and I was actually thinking to myself, how is this guy not asleep in the guillotine or in the, in the triangle? How are you not asleep? Oh. And he was doing, at some points, he was doing the wrong thing to defend. Oh, know? my God. But 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 you got to get, oh, Osborne was doing the wrong thing offensively. Yes, he was. You look and you go, would you push the elbow across? What are you doing? Yeah. Right? But it's like, all right. No, I get it. But, you know. I get it. Good stuff, though, man. I thought it was a great fight. I oh, thought, it was a great fight. <clears throat> Rodriguez is tough, man. Tough, tough. I mean, to go through oh, that yeah. in the first round, come back in them, getting the win, nicely done. Good performance came came out in the second. 
whole, like almost like a whole new person. Yeah. Nope. Oh, dude, he got a ten eight round in the second. Yeah. Just came out like a whole new person. Like, hey, I'm I'm here to to win this fight, and doesn't matter what happened in the first. You have to. But I, you got to you got to give it to Osborne also in the second because I thought he was quitting. Yeah. I thought ah, he's he's giving up. And man is like, nope, I'm not going to do it. And he just got himself out at, near the end of that round. I mean, tough performance. I hate to see someone that had the fight that he had, put out what he did, endured what he did, come away with a loss because, man, that was a great fight. Yeah. You know, it's just um, <clears throat> to to for a young fighter like Rodriguez to come back after the second round and reset his mindset and just be like, look, Round one's behind me. I gotta run. I gotta win rounds. Not two easy and three. to do. That's so difficult. Yes. It's not. It's it's like everyone's like, oh yeah, you can just tell yourself. No, 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 you can't. Your body you know what you're is telling t- yourself. Yeah. You're telling yourself. I just got fucked up. Yeah, and your body's <laughs> telling you like we just got our asses kicked like in the whole first round. <laughs> like it. this is not going the way we thought it was gonna go. Yeah, it wasn't so, supposed to be like your this. body's telling you that, and your brain is like, what the fuck just happened to us? What, what, like, okay, how do I get back on track? Like, it's still trying to figure out what happened in round one, and you're headed into round two. Yep. So, <clears throat> you know, John, the next fight, Norma Dumont and Irene Aldana. I got to be honest, man. I didn't think that Norma Dumont, I thought she was good. She's good. She's good, John. Oh, when she beat Jermaine, it told me everything I needed. Yeah, I, the thing is, I, I knew that I was, just, I didn't know how much to put on that because Jermaine coming off of a long, long layoff. Yeah. You know, and still. also, too, being 41, I think, 41, 40, yeah, somewhere around that. I'm like, yeah, she's right at 41. Yeah, so. I'm like, okay, how much, how much do I put into this? How much stake do I put in it? No, but, but man, but she looked. You got to figure it. Norman Dumont used to fight at 145. Mm hmm. Now she's there's no 145 yeah. in the UFC anymore. Thank God. She looks fantastic at 135. She does. Yeah, she looks great physically, and she, dude, that was a great fight against Irene because mm-hmm. Irene was coming after, her, and Irene just definitely, you know, the 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 head clash definitely opened up a cut that ended up getting even bigger. Oof. I mean, that thing was a nasty monster gash. Nasty you know, at the end. Exactly the kind of kind of cut we that we tell people this is the kind of cut that stops fights. Yeah, it's up and down. It's got what we call legs on it and stuff. It's like, oh yeah, that's that's a bad one. So they didn't care but about her at all, right? They just said, no, nah, she dies. She just dies. let it go. <laughs> <laughs> let it go. Let it go. Uh, John, any other fights on here you want to talk about? Uh, I want to say that uh, yeah, the Bahamas. Oh yeah, sorry. Against Manuel Torres. My God, <laughs> Torres came out like he was you know just gonna handle. Bahamondes, and I was like, wow, man, I, I did not see this happening. And then all of a sudden, Ignacio started coming back, and Ignacio ends up landing that right hand twice. Yeah. You know, same punch, puts him down two times with it, finishes him off that one. That was a hell of a win by Bahamondes. Well, Ketlin Souza, she got, she, uh, <laughs> oh, Yasmin, and Yasmin, how do you say her last name? Yurigu? Jarugi. Jarugi. She kicked. Jarugi in the hoo hoo, and oh, yeah. and that and little break was, right there jumped right she, into the getting the finish. Yeah. So because it, I felt like everything was going Yasmin's way. They she both was kicked success. each other in the crotch. Yeah, it's just yeah. very rare that you see that for females. Yeah, they, not at all. It's very rare. But I thought it was but, kind of funny the way she was handling it. I mean, like, come on, I mean, it's so rare, right? Then then for females to go like you know and have fun with it, it kind of. Because us guys, it's very, it's painful. I would imagine it's painful for them as well. Yeah. But, you know, you'll find, you'll see some of the times the guys will bounce up and down and we'll kind of look to the crowd and we like, you know, grab our, grab our stuff and move and junk around and stuff. But it's, it's fun to make light of it because it's like, okay, we're all, we're all wearing cups or most of us are. I don't know if they're wearing, wearing cups. Oh, I don't they are think not they wearing are. a cup. No, yeah. So, not. yeah, <clears throat> that's straight foot to hoo hoo. Anyways. <laughs> Joshua exactly. Van, I thought, uh, man, what a fight. great fight that was! Tough, tough fight, tough fight, man. I'll tell you what, you know, Chares in the first round, he he put it on Joshua Van, and then Joshua Van came out the body shot. Yes, this is where you try to tell people go to the body, and then when he's hurting him, then he goes up to the head, and I'm like, go back to the body. What are you doing? Yeah, go back to the body. <clears throat> great, great win coming in last minute for that fight. Charez is he's a dog man that guy's tough I'll watch that guy anytime he was fun but Joshua Van definitely deserved 
a ton of credit for for what he did in that fight on little notice. If you take a look at like guys like Joshua Van who came took this fight on short notice, and then Dan Ige who took the fight on short notice, and then Diego Lopez who took the fight against uh, Avalov or whatever on short notice, and they had great performances, you know. And yeah. Dan didn't win, uh, Diego didn't win in those fights, but there's a sense of relief that comes off your shoulders, like. Look, man, I know what I took this fight for. I'm going to come out here and have fun with it. And you're not putting that extra pressure on yourself to fight these things. And Every, we talk flows. about it all the time. If you sometimes you are your worst enemy, hmm. you know, you put you're the one that creates pressure. I tell yeah. people all the time when it came to refereeing, I would tell commissions, I would say, you don't want to put that guy in that fight. Why? He's ready. And he's not. You don't understand when he is standing in that cage by himself, his heart rate is going to be somewhere around 95 beats per minute. And then as the fighters come in, it's going to start to elevate. And if you were able to take his heart rate, it's going to be at 145 to 150 beats per minute standing still as the fighters are being announced because he's putting pressure on himself. He doesn't want to make a mistake. This is the, this is what he's worked for. He's now there. And fighters do the same thing. You know, yeah. Referees do it. Fighters do it. Judges, you have to get used to, you know, that just repetition of this. I, this is how I do it, and I, I'm used to it, and, and I don't let emotions get involved with this, because emotions are really nice at times, and sometimes they suck, because <laughs> they definitely hurt your performance. I would just take the Ivan Drago approach. If he dies, he dies. Yeah. <laughs> <There you laughs> that's go, how man. it works. Yeah. All right, guys. Hey, that's, that's going to wrap up our UFC talk. We got some Bellator to talk about, and then we'll we'll kind of glass over the Canelo fight a little bit. Just talk about you know dominant performance and yeah, was... and uh, you know he dropped him in the third with the big left hook, nicely done. Uh, you know, I just expected more out of him. Okay, we glossed over. It. Okay, we're moving on to the Bellator. You expected more here. out of Canelo? <laughs> yeah. He just, dude, every round he won. What are you talking about? Uh, I think he Canelo. lost round. I want to say round eight. I think he lost. It was, I get it. But I think he lost round eight. I think he might have lost another round. I, I may not have watched it close enough on my iPad. It was. It, the, yeah, as they started to get run away, like it was like yeah. round six or seven. I stopped kind of watching. I was like, yeah, but I think he I think he lost round eight, seven or eight. One of yeah. those rounds he lost. But yeah, but that was only because he just didn't do enough. It wasn't like he was kind of looked like offense. he was taking a round off. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and jump into Bellator. Bellator was over in London this weekend. It was earlier in the day, so I actually had to like go back through and watch it. But um, you know, real quick, we're gonna talk about Sarah Collins and Liam McCourt. This was your main event. Sarah Collins having a judo background, Liam McCourt having a judo background, and it was quick to see that Sarah Collins' judo background was much better than Liam McCourt's judo background. Yeah, but you know, um, <laughs> before we talk about the main event, though, man, this uh, this episode right here, this portion of it is brought to you by OnlyFans. I want to thank OnlyFans for continuing to support us. And look, we are having fun with them over there, right? And not the kind of fun you guys are thinking, all right? But guys, we uh, <laughs> we we've uh, we've uh, partnered up with them again, and uh, we're going to continue this relationship with them uh, over there on that platform. So please subscribe to us over there. It is free to subscribe to us over there. I just saw Justin Gaethje's putting out some new leg kicking content on, on his OnlyFans account. That's right. And uh, with Trevor Whitman. So they're doing some stuff over there. Great for them. You got Nick Diaz who's on there. You've got, you know, all the other guys. Also pro surfer Billy Kemper. He just signed with them as well. He's working with them. And uh, so, look, there's plenty of athletes that are on there that you guys might be familiar with, especially in the combat sports industry. So, you know, you got DJ over there. You got uh, Nick Diaz. You got Chris Cyborg. You've got Luke Rockhold, AJ McKee. You've got all of them over there. So, um, you know, also Jessica Penne. I believe Brent Primus, Ant who will be in the PFL finals. Yeah, Brent Primus. I mean, like, yeah. So you've got athletes that are over there that are selling content over there. So if you guys want to subscribe to them, I think majority of them are free. And then they, just, they do paid content. Or you could purchase, you know, the leg kicking, like from Justin Gaethje. He just talked about it on his Instagram yesterday. So, hey guys, head on over there. Subscribe to us. It's just a good place to go to connect a little bit more with the fighter, your the fighters that you support, you want to support. So get an opportunity and a chance over there at OnlyFans. Subscribe to us first over there. And I will be doing some lives over there. So I think actually uh, not this. I'll announce my live on Tuesday. So I'll do my live this week uh, over there sometime uh, during the day. Just a solo one. Just give you guys a, a little extra Q&A and some uh, extra content for you guys. So I want to make sure you guys are getting what you guys subscribe to over there on OnlyFans. Also, too, BetUS uh, brought us the odds. And uh, we didn't do the Bellator odds for BetUS, but... Let's go ahead and talk right now. Uh, Sarah Collins and Liam McCourt. 
John, it was more of the power of Sarah Collins. And you have, you've dealt with guys that had judo guys, not just guys. But I've dealt with judo uh, practitioners. Yeah. They don't seem like they're strong. No, but, we, but they are they just are. this weird, freakishly strong. When they grab a hold of you, when Great they leverage. hug, yeah, they they just man, they've got they've got strength that I hadn't felt before. <laughs> and I was like, and I've wrestled my whole life pretty much, you know, and uh, I've trained with a lot of world class athletes. But man, the strength that they possess is just weird in positions that they just have control, not just positioning and body control and placement of the body and how to use their weight, but also just the grip strength and the control of holding you and how hard they hit. And we well, saw that Sarah Collins with a beautiful shot right behind the ear against Leo McCourt sat her face down on the canvas. And then she yep. followed up very nicely done. Followed up with a rear naked choke. Yeah. yeah. But I'm saying she followed <laughs> up and but look, when someone gets hurt that bad where they literally land face first. Yeah. I mean, not. yeah, the rest of it was history. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, you look, you look at that fight, and you go. Lee McCourt's had some good, you know, good fights and everything, but now, you know, she's eight and four. This puts uh, Sarah Collins back up to I think six and zero oh now, undefeated. She's really showing that you know what she's in that position where she, uh, she's pretty dominant now. This is featherweight, and so you got to look and say, does Bellator still have Chris Cyborg over with Bellator? Or is she with the PFL because she's going to be fighting Larissa Pacheco coming up? But you know, Sarah Collins getting closer to possibly having the opportunity to fight Chris Cyborg, which I don't know if that's a good opportunity or not. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, it's something different for her because, like, look, yeah. Chris hasn't had to fight somebody. I think so much of this level of judo and grapple wise, no. And so a lot of the a lot of the fighters that Chris is having to fight. The majority of them were mainly stand-up, you know, and I don't get me wrong, man. Nunes had good stand-up, but she was also black belt in jiu-jitsu, but she very rarely used her jiu-jitsu. Yeah. Um, outside of that, I haven't really seen Cyborg fight a whole lot of good judo players or jiu-jitsu fighters. Yeah. So I think uh, her having to fight Sarah Collins may end up being a great fight. I, yeah. I was always, I was never really sold on Liam McCourt being quite ready for Chris Cyborg. No, and, was I, I. and I think we saw, we saw that tonight or today, I should say. You know, and I like Leah a lot. She's a sweet, sweet person. But, but you got to look and you say, but she's gone and she's had some fights against tough people. You know, Sarah mm -hmm. McMahon. She beat Sarah McMahon and stuff. You look yeah. and you go, there's times when I thought this is not a good fight for you. She's come out on top. Yeah. So she's she's a tough girl. No, I get it. I get it. Tough All lady. right. Next fight. So Simon Powell against <laughs> Rafael Xavier. Good fight. It was. It was. It was a close fight. Yeah, it was. Very close. Yep. It, it could have gone either way. Both guys had their moments in this. It ended up Simon Powell gets the split decision uh, in the fight, but uh, it could have gone the other way. Mm -hmm. It was it was that close. I had Powell winning when I watched it, but it was not like, oh, he walked away with it. Yeah. Xavier, though, with the push kick up the middle of the face in the yeah, first he, round, yeah. and then the follow-up and the leg kick damage that he was doing throughout the fight. I was leaning towards uh, Xavier until the third round when he got tired. Yeah. He just was exhausted. You could tell he was kind of like doing half, like half, like trying to trip and fall into his butt and all these things. So I was, I was kind of like, okay, maybe, maybe, yeah, uh, maybe, maybe you shouldn't win. Yeah, maybe you shouldn't win because you're. Yeah. He looked exhausted towards the end of the fight, but I thought it was a pretty damn good fight. They had some good exchanges. Yeah. They were throwing down. It was, it was a good fight. It um, was. well, good. I said it was. Okay. Luke Train Luke Trainer taking on Lorinius Urban Vicious. I, <laughs> I cannot say a Lithuanian name to save my ass. So. Urban Vicious. Urban yep. Vicious. Mm -hmm. But Luke Trainer really uh you know, since his one loss, he's really come out and looked good. He's yeah. taking the taking the O away from certain people. Here he looked good again. Very quick submission uh victory, rear naked choke. He's getting better. He's he's a big body. Yeah, he's big. He's, he's long. He's, he's body. good, six decent on the six. ground. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And a super nice guy. Super nice guy. Does a lot of stuff with fo like foster kids, foster kids, helping out with the young kids, you know, and yeah. working with them and, you know, just kind of being like a role model for them. Good for him, yeah. man. Good for him. Mike, uh, Mark De uh, DeCussey versus De Kessie. Tim Wild. Got a unanimous decision win against Tim Wild. That's, you know. 
you take a look and you go, when Mark signed with uh, Bellator coming out of the UFC, you look, he said, man, he, he's a good fighter and he's gotten way better over the last couple of years because he was only a kickboxer before. He was yeah, but he was, he was only a wrestling. kickboxer, but he wrestled a lot in the UFC. No, he started near the end. When he first went in the UFC, he was straight stand-up. Yes, he was. And so then he started wrestling, and now he's become a wrestler. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't make any sense. But why? Like, I mean... He's getting wins now. No, no, I get it. But look, John, let's be honest. In the third round, he was so tired from wrestling, he lost he the third exhausted. round. He was lost oh, yeah. the third round. Yeah. And Tim, Tim is one of those guys, I feel like he's built for five rounds. He's not a three-round fighter. Like, he, he always loses the first round. I don't think I've ever seen him win a first round. <laughs> I like Tim Wilde. I do like fighter. him a lot. He's, he's tough as hell. He, he's a gamer. He's got good stand-up, you know? But his last... Before this fight, he got knocked yeah. out by uh, Souza, which he was winning winning the round easily, but right near the end, he got knocked out and stuff. And look, he's getting a little bit older now. Mm -hmm. Tim, Tim is at that point now where uh, he's uh, reaching that 37-year-old, mm -hmm. 38-year-old mark, and it, things just start to change. Uh, speaking of Souza, he had Souza and Archie Kogan. Yeah, this is the one we talked about. And what was the difference? Well, I mean, did you have it scored this way? No. Okay. Thank you. I, I had I had Archie losing the fight. Okay. I, I didn't think he looked that good. In it. I didn't think so either. I think he just didn't know what to do, which is weird because you can tell a guy who wrestles as well as he does <clears throat> and looked like he'd get the takedown anytime he wanted. <clears throat> Sorry, Still, excuse me. He, trying to stand up with someone. Trying to, to stand. Throw. But then you could tell he felt uncomfortable on the yeah. feet. So why not go back to your wrestling? You want to know why he didn't go back to his wrestling? Because he hasn't been training the transition from boxing to wrestling as, as of lately, very fluidly. He had great takedowns and great lifts and slams, but you've got to do it all the time. It's got to be in your daily training, on the mitts, on the bag, with your partner. You're just flowing, just pop, pop, combination, shot, pop, pop, combination, different way I enter. You know, high crotch, boom, turn the corner. You've got a double leg, boom, like hit, you know, single, render the flare. You've got to change it up and work on it. He didn't have an answer for it because there was times where he was literally with his back to the fence. I'm like, you're so, you're a way better wrestler than this guy. How is your back on the fence? And skirting out the sides and like kind of tripping over the, the fence. I was just like, man, what is going on? This is not the kid that I've seen fight before. No. So um, <clears throat> very tough fight. We knew it was going to be a tough fight. But uh, I, di I didn't think Archie won the fight, even though I was wanting him to win. Maybe, yeah. maybe I was being a little biased, you know, when I was expecting him to win. But, man, he didn't. He, I didn't think that he, he fought to his potential. But we've all had those fights. He's still undefeated, though. I think he's 11 or 12-0 and 0 now. 11-0. and 0. Yeah, 11-0. and 0. So good for him, man. But good, you know, good on him. I think this will be one of those things where. <clears throat> Hopefully he learns from it. It's like, it's like a loss, but without the loss. Yeah. Like, damn, I didn't fight to my potential. Everyone knows I didn't fight my, to my potential. But you know what? You live to fight another day, and your O stays for you for one more fight at least. So True. Uh, any other fights on here you want to chat about? Uh, I want to say Joseph Luciano. That was a very nice uh, anaconda choke on Stephen Hill, who is known as a, a grappler, mm -hmm. knows what uh, is going on, but he locked that thing on, and Stephen Hill was in trouble. So, uh, uh, Kieran Clark had a very dominant performance. Yeah. Got Very the dominant decision. All right, guys. Well, hey, that's gonna wrap um, our our combat sports talk. Is there anything else you guys <laughs> we need to talk about there, George? Come on, George. Come up with something. <clears throat> One thing. There was something on here. Did One I send something to you guys? simple thing. Uh, yeah, let's let's go there ahead were, and this. well, the yeah. UFC confused Terrence Clark with rapper Kendrick Lamar tonight. That was pretty humorous. <laughs> Terrence Clark or Terrence uh, Crawford? Whatever, Terrence Crawford. Terrence, <laughs> Terrence Clark what? was a basketball player. Terrence Crawford versus, yeah. He was there with uh, the sh the Turk guy, Turkey yeah. guy uh, from. Bud. Yeah. Um, That's well, the, be the best tweet, the, the, not a tweet, mm -hmm. the best uh, text message I got of the night is Ian Parker. Ian Parker, who you know, we were talking with and had on yeah. the show and, he was talking about look O'Malley's just like one one big win away from being the UFC's star, and he he texts me he says 
And just like that, Sean O'Malley is not a star. <laughs> That's Damn, messed man. up, man. You are cold. That You're is really cold man, Ian. John, what did you think of these things here? Let me see if I can pull this thing Uh-oh. up. These uh, holograms. Oh, with, with Dana. Dana, Sean O'Malley. like. Oh, Gotta love them. You sit there. And it's like, but it was in Spanish. Yeah, Dana speaking Spanish. That's awesome, man. Dana Pica de Penny. That was awesome. And then there Spanglish. was. Oh, you know what? Let's go ahead and talk about this real quick. Michael Chandler fighting Charles Oliveira. Boom. <laughs> That's what I was going to talk about. Well, what do you think? I think I told you long ago he was going to fight Conor <laughs> McGregor. It's, I, it, is, it is proven to be right. Look, I, I think it's, first off, I think it's the right thing for Michael Chandler. I'm glad Michael Chandler yep. took the fight. I think this is exactly what he needs. I'm not saying that it's an easy opponent for him, but it's one that he can get up for. He can get excited about Charles Oliveira because he's faced Charles Oliveira before. He had Charles Oliveira in trouble in that fight. Charles Oliveira had him in trouble. Then he had Charles in trouble, and then Charles finished him. And you look and you go, this is a fight that could go to either guy again. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, And it's a fight that should make michael chandler you know excited as far as getting ready for the fight based upon i can get a win against a guy that got a win against me for charles it's, it's not that exciting a fight i've already fought him i got a win but for michael that's this is a good uh a good fight uh since you haven't fought in two it, it will be two years when he steps in that cage against charles Oliveira. two years since his fight with dustin poirier that was a loss. He's been sitting on that fight that long, trying to get this Conor McGregor fight. So I think it's a great thing that Michael Chandler took the fight. Smart move. But it's also it's a risky move. I'm just going to be honest because, Char- well, Charles Oliveira is not an easy opponent. And if you lose, guess what? That thing that you've been hanging around for all this time, do you think that they're going to give you that fight? Only if you win. So, extra incentive. I did hear that he was well, that they had offered him Max Holloway at the Sphere, and he they didn't. He it. didn't take it. I didn't read why he didn't take it. He decided to take the Charles Oliveira fight. Wow, um, that just blew me away. To be honest, um, I was surprised because with Max, I mean, at least the wrestling could come into play without really a whole lot of submission threat. We know he's not going to use it, but at least it's still there. I, I can at least pretend, pretend that he okay, would like try it. to yes. use his wrestling. Use what he actually came to the dance with. Yeah. No, no, he uh, definitely won't. Um, but no, um, wh- I guess where I'm at with him on this is you spent two years away. You were putting weight on. And now you're gonna have to work focus on getting your way back down to 155. Yep. So yes. that's gonna be that's gonna suck. That's you know, gonna suck. And at the 38 on. years old. Yeah, but I want you to think about this. It is September 14th, right? Yes. Yeah. September 15th, actually, our time. But <laughs> yeah. So it's the middle of September, right? And when it when is that fight in New York? No, about two months away. He's got eight weeks to just get himself, no, get himself on a good nutritional program, one that is starting to slowly just break him down. That's what he's got to do, man. He, he, you, can't, you can't do this in any other way. It needs to be smart. You need to be ingesting a lot of food, but good food. Everything is calculated. And that's how he'll make it and make it well. If he doesn't do that, then it's going to be a struggle. Yeah. The thing is, you, he's going to spend his whole camp trying to get his weight back down. And yeah. then you're not getting any better. Your, your camps are meant for he's you. Not, he's not going to be getting better right now, Josh. I get it. Let's but like you you want to at least fine tune what you've been trying to work on for somebody. Sure. Right? But Well, he's been working on some once completely again, different game plan. How long has he been away? Two years. So how is he getting better? Well, I don't know. He's been training for not, somebody. If there's one thing I will tell you, if you're a fighter or you have anything within the combat sports world, even referees, you're away for two years, you're not as good as you were. 
you need repetitions. Really? You need to be. You really yes. think that? Because um, I have a friend of mine. His name is Dominic Cruz, and ring rust is not real. <laughs> okay? And he <laughs> proved it by coming back to win his title. Yeah? And it's not real. What's happened? What's that? What's happened in his last couple fights? But John, he's he, no, no, no. Don't try to compare oh, the no, two no, things. No, no. We're what's talking the, about why, the why time when he difference? had off. You're trying. You no, no. Do young? not. Do not. You are. You're. Young. You are legendary for trying to misdirect the conversation. I'm not misdirecting. Do you anything. mean? What do you mean? What happened in his last couple of fights? We're not talking about his last couple of fights. We're talking about ring rust. We're not talking about age rust. Okay. He, come on. Ring rust is when you take time away, <laughs> supposedly. <laughs> Dominic Cruz has never had ring rust, and yeah, he proved uh, it by winning his title after the long three years off. Tip my hat to Dominic Cruz, man. Dom's the man. Okay. <laughs> I love it. Uh, but look, I, I think with I think with Michael Chandler, I don't think that he's been getting better, but I do think he's been working on things that are different than what he will normally fight like. At least my fingers are that way. Fingers we're going to find way. out, aren't we? Yeah, but I also think, though, for him, and I said this to some people that are closer to him, I said, basically, his brain and his body probably needed this time off. I, you know, you said that to me when okay. we were talking, and I was like, you know, that's not a bad take on that. Yeah. You know, he, he had some really hard fights. He took some real damage in some of them. And they were all back to back to back. The Justin Gaethje yeah. fight, he took some severe damage. In the in the Dustin Poirier, you know, he took some severe damage. Charles and Oliveira. So, you know, I agree with you. It was a good thing, possibly, for that. I don't know if two years is good, but one year would have been good. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm looking, too, though. He was still training. He was getting ready for Connor one time. He was about, five, you know, three, four weeks out from the fight. And then the fight got well, canceled. Hell, Dates. not even three or four weeks. One, he was yeah. in what in June? It was how how close was it? A week away, something like that. Two weeks away. Two weeks away, I think. Yeah. You know, so then you know there was there was multiple times he was training for that fight, getting ready, doing all these things. So I think he he's always kind of been in and out of camp. So he had maybe he's not getting better, but at least his body is not uh, out, extremely out of shape. Oh no, he's first off. There's one thing about Chandler that I will always. Yeah. He's never out of shape. Yeah. The guy is, he's a workout machine. He's always in the gym working out for physical conditioning and stuff like that. So yeah. uh, I don't, I don't, uh, that, that was never a concern for me. All right, guys. Well, Hey, we're going to wrap up our show. Uh, we got to get, we got to get off this show here. So George can get it edited and get it out to you guys by tomorrow morning. 